Hello everyone. So we have here Arvind Kothari from Niveshai, uh, Piyush Mehta from Caprice Investment and Vinit Mittal from Navitas Green Solution Private Limited. So they all three are in Shanghai and they are attending solar uh, fair over there. So let's start with Arvind Kothari. What are their te key takeaways from them? Hi everyone. I hope you all are well. Um, it is a very good experience that we are having here in Shanghai. Uh, the interactions over the past two years have made us believe that the India growth story in solar is has just begun and maybe the Chinese solar story is facing a lot of uh, maybe medium term issues which is in a way making a lot of materials and a lot of capital goods cheaper for our country because the industry over here is oversupplied and hence any manufacturer that we are talking for a solar cell manufacturing line or a module manufacturing line, they want to support manufacturing in India and provide at reasonable cost. And hence, we guess that the overall manufacturing of cells and modules in our country will see a very good runway in the coming two, three years. And whoever is capitalizing on these, these uh, 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 you know, years, we guests are well placed for the coming seven years. Uh, I have uh, Vineet and Piyush with me. Uh, both have also had their own experiences and I'd like them to share a bit and then we can take it up for questions. Okay. Uh, so yeah, hi, I'm Vineet Mittal from Navita Solar. We are the Indian solar manufacturing company uh, in the industry for last 11 years. Uh, so it's like a yearly routine experience for us to come to this exhibition called SNEC, somewhere around May and June, uh, bearing the one or two years of COVID uh, when it was not operational. We have been coming here uh, and seeing the whole exhibition grow like anything. Uh, this year, they have changed the venue to a much bigger space, uh, 16 big domes, uh, our guess is it would cross six to seven like footfall. It was, I think, six like last year. It might be seven like to eight, like maybe more. Um, these are broad numbers. Uh, overall, the industry is growing, no doubt. Um, the sector is growing because of the global attention to renewables and everything. The cost going down and becoming more affordable. But because there is intense competition, the focus on technology is at the utmost. Uh, we talk to any manufacturer, any equipment supplier, uh, they're talking three years ahead, five years ahead. Uh, things like uh, Perovsky and Tandem, which were just theoretical. Now they are uh, displaying their products on their boards. Uh, they are able to showcase the efficiency levels. The roadmap is already there. We will bring a certain product in 2025, 2027, 2030. Uh, they have a roadmap for 2032. Upwards of 32 and 33 percent uh, cell efficiencies, which was not heard of a couple of years before. We would assume or uh, think that uh, 25, 26 percent is a theoretical upper side of a solar cell. It won't grow beyond that, but they have surpassed all such uh, technological uh, uh, ceilings. And uh, I think for us in India, the learning part is that there is so much to uh, 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 apply, uh, apply for, if not invent, at least apply for. And uh, it's in a way very good for our country, uh, uh, taking lesser space, uh, higher efficiency products with the lowest cost possible. With whatever duty structures we have, it is still a very low cost uh, energy generation product. So we will discuss more as and when in this uh, program. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Piyush here. Uh, uh, I'm the CRM partner and Capri's investment managers. I think uh, what we've heard about China in terms of size, uh, it's really, really true. Uh, as Vineet mentioned, you know, the size of the conference, uh, the kind of size of the companies that we've seen here, it's truly magnificent. While China continues to have, you know, more than 1,000 gigawatts of uh, capacity, and, uh, you know, it, it, it will continue to remain the world's factory for modules and cells for years to come. Now, this essentially implies that the cell prices and module prices will continue to remain. 
uh, and the stability for the Indian module manufacturers is here to stay. And I think for the next three, five, three years, yeah. three to five years, we'll see this very sustainable growth, growth in most of these companies. Oh, okay. I think a lot has been spoke on technology as well. Uh, while most of the Indian manufacturers would be on monopark, I think we've met a lot of companies here who spoken about Topcon and uh, HJT, which is heterojunction technology. Now, 75% of China's cell capacity is still Topcon. But so the natural assumption is that, you know, India will migrate to that technology as well. Uh, but again, you know, none of the cycles has been proven for heterojunction or for HJT. So I think that the situation still remains fluid. Mm -hmm. And the larger companies in China, like Jinko, Trina, Longi, Jile Solar, they are facing a lot of headwinds. A lot of pain we've seen amongst a lot of smaller companies as well. In fact, uh, in a lot of smaller companies where we, small in China means 15 gigawatts, uh, 20 gigawatts companies are, are near the brink of bankruptcy as well. So eventually the profit pool will continue to be concentrated amongst the top four to five players. And that is a trend we'll see in India as well, where large part of the profit pool for Indian solar manufacturers will be concentrated between the top seven, eight players. And we've also met few companies on battery storage side and green hydrogen side. And I think we are still a long way away. Uh, while battery storage technology is proven, uh, green hydrogen continues to remain operationally challenging uh, due to cost and transportation. So near term remains only a story. So these these have been our takeaways from the conference. Yeah. And I think as three of us are on the same page when we say that India's story for the renewable space uh, has a clear runway for the next five years. Uh, questions are welcome now. Yeah. And one more thing I want to add that it has been perplexing for a lot of investors to invest in solar since COVID because they've seen prices, you know, go down. But a very unique thing about solar in India is that with ALMM and a lot of our policies in place, the government has very nicely protected our local manufacturing industry to give them cash flows to do backward integration in cell and through PLI encouraging the value chain in our country. So if you look at, if you want to understand India, what we now come to know from China is that China had a phase where government had policies which were supportive and we had the world largest guys emerge like, you know, Piyush was just mentioning about the Longis of the world, the Jays of the world, or Jinkos of the world. There is an opportunity for our country that if this policy framework remains, the prices that are going down are supportive for the solar sector in India. It is not that it is going against them because we get technology at a lower cost. We are getting materials at a lower cost. And that is what in a phase where we are scaling up. So if this means more cash flows for the companies, they will be able to afford technology, innovate, and hence we complete the whole value chain in our country. So this is what our sense over the past two uh, you know, days has been. And, and, I, and, been, and yeah. I think it's very important to understand that most of the investors ask us, that the prices are falling what yeah. about the company what will happen to their profits we have to first understand that as of today indian companies are pure assemblers we need to look at gross profit per watt for each of these companies which has largely remained stable for the last five six years irrespective of what has happened to the module prices or cell prices so as long as your gross profit per watt is intact i think the profitability is here to stay so investors need to keep that in mind while we are while they are thinking to invest in this space. And what Piyush has, you know, just mentioned, if you look at the data point, the cell prices, I guess we need would have more data to share that in China have crashed between 60 to 70 percent last year. But the India cell prices are at the same price. This is because the government has been promoting the DCR requirements. And the DCR requirement means that the cell needs to be procured from our own country. And if the Chinese cell is currently 3.5 to 4 cents, Indian cell still sells at 15 cents. And that means that the, the, the profit pool in our country is getting protected and giving cash flows to these companies to expand. I guess there is no reason for us to 
challenge this thesis that the government or the players currently have that this industry has bleeded for over a decade in our country because of chinese uh, imports dumping everything and now maybe 5 to 7 years they need to make the profit pool required for our industry to reach a respectable uh, level uh, we can uh, now take your questions i guess thank you so much so we have first question over here is that already this space is overvalued so how we are looking at this industry from here on so if you look at so do you think the this past earnings yeah so if you look at uh, the past earnings have not been uh, you know giving a clear picture of what the future lies ahead because if you look at even last year companies like navitas or other current companies might have had short term inventory losses because you have sell prices going up sell prices going down before post covid there was a very volatile shipping environment and a lot of things you know changed but the important point over here is most of the players in india now are making a pass through of whatever sell cost is there so they are working in a way converters where their margins or their ebitda per megawatt that they make are converting towards you know roe for the companies of around 25 28% if this continues and the growth that is there around 40 50% uh for all these players the kind of demand that we've been seeing and with the lmm in place if the chinese import don't come this looks to continue for the coming 3 4 years that is where we believe the valuations need to be uh you know analyzed rather than what past has been uh, maybe piyush can throw more light on so that so i think uh, it is very important to understand that what these companies have done over the past past 5 7 years they'll be achieving in the next one year so if you continue to be anchored on what has been the profitability over the past 5 year i can tell you that what profits they have made over the past 5 years they could end up making in the next 1 to 2 years so the profits are growing exponentially we are talking about multiplying profits and not compounding profits and when you build that into your estimate you will still see that companies like wari vikram uh, other uh, listed companies like insulation energy most of these companies would be trading sub 20 times or sub 15 times uh two year forward so i think looking at trailing 12 months pe i think you will be harming your own investment analysis yeah i mean i am not an investor i am not a banker here but i think uh, when we talk about uh, having over valuations or uh, euphoria i think we are missing out on the huge opportunity that india is uh, sitting upon whether we talk about valuation that's a very completely different story but uh, uh, there is no uh, denying of the fact that the sector is going to grow leaps and bounds we were that between stuck between 10 to 12 15 gigawatt a year this year definitely we are going to cross 30 which is a big jump after 3 to 4 years and it is going to grow maybe 35 or 40 gigawatts in the coming years the only challenge i think is not technology it is going to be the infra road access and, and, and sorry the land land availability and uh, uh, transmission infra but apart from that uh, the policies are quite positive government is coming out with tender almost every single week uh, and in different segments of the uh, sector be it a small residential rooftop and the surya ghat scheme the kusum program where the mid size investors are able to invest and the mid size suppliers are able to supply in those uh, product projects and then the utility projects whether it is plain vanilla solar hybrid with solar wind hybrid with battery hybrid with pump storage so this immense uh, uh, transformation of the whole energy sector we are not doing a green business it's a whole change of the existing infra into a new economy green economy so uh, there can be some exceptions here and there but on the broad level at least on the business side i can be very confident that business is going to grow valuation is a factor of uh, averaging it yeah. will happen over the 3 to 5 year period so again i don't need to maybe comment much but on a short short level that sector is continue to grow i think valuations are also looked in terms of the target addressable market 
I think we fail to understand that India is where China was in 2016. And on a overall basis, we are at 78 gigawatts. And if you look at the peak capacity and no new thermal capacity coming by 2030, uh, you know, the growth that we are seeing on uh, energy consumption, India will need 25 to 30 gigawatts of renewable energy installation and capacity every year. For that, I think the installations will have to be 4x, 5x of uh, what we need. So if we need 25 gigawatts of energy, I need to install somewhere close to 100 to 125 gigawatts. And this is not just a five-year trend. This, I think, will go beyond 2030 and maybe even beyond 2035. So that you have to adjust to valuations. And also people who have, you know, had the similar mindset when maybe that, you know, technology uh, or the software industry in India was growing. Maybe when the IT sector in, you know, the 90s was booming and dot-com bubble happened and a lot of valuation crashed. But the point was that the Indian technology space, IT space, maintained their run rate of growth. And that made those companies multi-baggers. So when you have the growth sustaining, even commoditized businesses, which people, you know, say that there's no moat in Indian IT, is just, you know, you know the cheap engineers that we have over here or things like that. The point is the same thing has repeated over and over again in multiple businesses. And if the growth sustains, the return ratios are good. Those sectors have always done well. So if if we are looking at the long-term trend where the sector itself is growing fast, uh, I guess there'll be a lot of companies which will be increasing the profit pool and then they will attract a lot of institutional investors and that is when, I guess, valuations will start to become expensive. Yeah. So next question is that in the whole value chain of solar, so module have started manufacturing in India. So what else can be indigenized over in over other and other thing in the value chain? I think modules have been getting manufactured in India way back in 1987-88. So it's not a new product, definitely. We have been uh, manufacturing modules uh, as per use case of Indian conditions. Definitely last couple of years, we have seen a major jump in the capacity additions, in technology, in automation. But module manufacturing has been a very quite uh, three decade, four decade old business. Uh, upwards of the value chain, uh, next couple of years, uh, we will see a slow of uh, solar cell manufacturing. I think at least 20, 30 gigawatt of uh, cell manufacturing will come online. Um, so uh, like us, there were like at least 10 manufacturers who were negotiating or finalized orders with the cell equipment suppliers here. And the equipment suppliers are all global, whether it is Chinese, some are German, some are uh, integrated between the two. Uh, apart from that, uh, they, under the PLI, the larger companies have their mandate of uh, going upwards still in got wafer than uh, silicon, polysilicon. So, we are going to see those factories come up in next three to four years. Uh, on the overall ecosystem, we have seen glass manufacturing grown from one player to five. We have seen EVA manufacturing grown from one, one large player to at least eight or nine medium size and large size companies, which are enough to supply the current demand. We have seen a lot of uh, ribbon suppliers. Uh, aluminum frame extrusion is becoming a very big business suddenly. Uh, it was always there in the window and other businesses. But the solar aluminum frame has become very big. A 50 to 100 kilo capex is a sweet spot in that market as well. So we are seeing a lot of uh, 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 other manufacturing related to solar and uh, non-solar, say inverters, cables, a lot of things. And this has happened in a lot of ecosystems, right? You think about the pharma ecosystem, the chemical ecosystem. I Indians have never been uh, you know, way behind once they've been given an opportunity. So I guess the ecosystem was missing uh, all these years. As Vineet rightly said, me and Piyush might have met at least 10 to 12 manufacturers out of India over here to, you know, discussing about capex in cell or maybe module. And mostly everyone is talking out their cell. They want to expand in a couple of years or next year or three years. So if the cell ecosystem is going to be in our country, so we 
we are one step backwards then we go one step back so the whole ecosystem gets backward integrated uh, as in when the players you know plan those capacities so it, 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 in fact this is a year which i guess a lot of these companies would be earning excellent cash flows they'll be self sustaining uh, most of their capexes or they'll be raising capital they'll be going in the markets and we've made a couple of rounds for uh, companies bhush has raised so and i guess if the sector continues to do well and the investor interest is good as it is right now uh, there will be an ecosystem in our country and we all can be surprised by how we have how we were surprised in chemicals pharma and other sector and i think when you're looking at the supply chain you have to think about the sector as module manufacturer epc companies and everyone else and when you look at the sector you also look at the profit pool so 40 to 45% of the profit pool will be concentrated uh, with the module manufacturers another 40 45% stays concentrated with epc companies and balance 10% will be a lot of ancillary businesses where there is transformers transformer oils and a lot of new businesses will come up around it so while within modules the profit pool as i said you know is concentrated between the top 7 8 players uh for the epc side profit pool it will be concentrated between at least 30 40 players but there the ratios will be far far better in terms of roes and rocs and rocs and asset turns that's why they will always stay at a premium so you'll have to look at the entire sub- supply chain and where the profit pool is concentrated <laughs> so next question is that uh, so today india has around 60 gigawatt of module manufacturing but cell is around 20 gigawatt so how long we are seeing dependency on china with respect to the uh, uh, with respect to the cell and the knowledge sharing uh, so whatever capacity we have in the solar modules uh, generally it is monopark there is a self life to it new technologies monopark has been the market for last 3 4 years and now it is a def- I, w- i won't say the fag end of the technology but it is the f- topcon has uh, come up quite rapidly so a- although we have 60 gigawatt not every not all of it will be useful uh, for large utility developers purely because of the fact that topcon capacities have increased and their prices have gone down so that ratio will be uh, the deductions will be slightly reduced uh cell manufacturing in fact is not even 20 right now as per my understanding it is still below 10 okay. but next year or uh, maybe early second half of next a year beyond we would be seeing 30 40 gigawatt of uh, cell manufacturing in india so that gap is going to be quite reduced and once we see a government protecting the cell manufacturing like the module manufacturing almm there is a talks like uh, approved list of cell manufacturers i don't know there has been talks around so uh, minister has already announced those kind of plans in the previous uh, uh, government so uh, the gap will be uh, will continue to reduce and uh, there is going to be a decent uh, profitability in the cell manufacturing purely because of the complexity of the manufacturing process and we also need to look at what amount of equipment do we want to export right so one is the india market but if you look at the past three years one of the leading manufacturer in our country has his order book as high as 50000 crores from the us alone so if you look at the policies around the world maybe europe hasn't been supportive but there are talks on similar lines yes. that there'll be anti dumping duties in europe as well so world needs a supply chain which is you know Uh, maybe ex of china and no other country is developing ecosystem as fast as our country is making so there has to be a domestic demand that we need to suffice and also an export demand that we need to cater to and what we need said because technology is changing fast and what you rightly said that the top notch uh, you know 5 to 7 players would almost rule the market and they'll be the players who would have backward integration what is clear from this exhibition is that only players who are backward integrated in the long run would be making a uh, bulk of the profit pool and they'll be the ones who would rule uh, i guess the capacity expansions as well so we need to look at 
player by player how they are expanding because smaller guys like in china also are shutting down right now that will happen in india as well and i think make no mistake about it that china will continue to remain the centerpiece in the world while indian players are talking about adding 4 gigawatts 3 gigawatts 2 gigawatts companies like nonji talk about adding 40 gigawatts next year alone so they will remain the world's factory and i think infrastructure wise we are years or maybe decades away so but the infrastructure is there now it is the creation and the focus for the government the policy focus is there so maybe it will take some time but definitely i think this will develop beautifully so we have next question over here is where do you see margin margin stabilizing for solar panel manufacturers and outlook on cell pricing so if you look at uh, the pricing right now which is currently in india is supportive of margin expansion on two accounts one is the capacity utilization in india generally for panel manufacturers used to be used to be around 40 50% only because in monsoons there used to be a dip in demand and then uh, technology changed so fast that you know if you are putting new line the existing line uh, gets lesser utilized what is happening now is because we are exporting so even if we have monsoon in india we have a global market to cater also because the developers now due to the lmm have high demand they are not focusing ke monsoon mein hum kam demand kar lete hain so, so there is a demand across uh, the the year so that generally means higher operating leverage and hence operating margins naturally should go up because of that even if we assume same pricing second thing is that the raw materials that we are importing from china because of overcapacity in china are going down but the module prices in india are not falling at the same rate because of the protection by the government now this protection of government would stay two years three years we don't know but if that stays that means higher margins then the normal 7 8% margins people are making 12 13 maybe they'll stabilize at 10 11 in cell i guess the margins currently are insane because you're importing you know polysilicon or whatever the raw materials at at 3 3 and a half cent and the cell is being sold at 14 15 because of kosom or other programs of the government which requires 60% value addition in our own country that means cell needs to be made in our country and as vinith was alluding to there might be a policy of approved list of cell manufacturers that also can come so yeah so incrementally i guess uh, short term or medium term module makers are making also higher than historic margin but if they integrate backward integrate into cell that that is when they uh, make their business model safer and that will have a, 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 a more more um, uh, predictable margins over the long term i think very important to understand what uh, and this is two three times what arvind has mentioned that we have protection and what is alm alm is nothing but approved list of module module manufacturers which means that every plant coming on the public grid has to procure its modules from an indian manufacturer which is essentially 90 95% of the demand and that is how well protected the industry is and from a lot of promoters we met in the conference and you know within the industry they believe that this almm should last more than 3 to 5 years it's already there in the industry so to have a precedent is we can take the next question so next question is that sir, we have heard so many restrictions on the chinese player so what have you seen in the expo so in terms of restrictions uh, the country doesn't have a restriction on getting equipments to manufacture sell or module in our country the restriction is on import of the end product and the government would then restrict even sell import that is what the policy ideally should be because you need the ecosystem to develop in a country and that is healthy if people catch up and make uh, sells in india then go back to making polysilicon in india that's a dream which our country wants to achieve 
in fact any anyone and everyone uh, of uh, the countries are wanting to you know secure the supply chain so these restrictions ideally should stay i don't think any there is any reason for government to reverse course because as vinit i guess one time was telling me and which gave me a lot of confidence that these policies should stay that the end power price when you assume 50% duty or whatever duty you put on solar uh, panels in india the power price is just go by 10 cent and in us it goes up by just 5 cent maybe 10 paisa in india i guess and uh, maybe 5 cent in the us so that is not going to materially impact the coffers of the government but what it creates or gives the opportunity to our country and its entrepreneurs to have a very credible supply chain create jobs in our country and that is the mandate which the government wants the youth also to be employed in the sunrise sector why would it want to destroy an ecosystem which is just costing maybe a 10 15 paisa of the end a uh, power price which we can absorb easily with the government finances improving maybe we need can throw or piyush can throw more. i mean uh, all said and done the tariffs have not increased like what arun is talking about we can look at the history last two two and a half years of bidding after all the restrictions plus the duty imposition the tariffs have been quite steady so uh, the end use which is the power that we want to consume in the country green brown whatever as a consumer we don't care the tariff is not increasing in fact it is helping the a uh, peak tariff to go down in summers when you look at the spot prices it used to be 15 12 13 now because of the influx of solar in the daytime so there is enough supply in the daytime in summer season which is helping the the supply to remain to an extent constant uh and that is in fact helped to reduce the overall um, spot pricing in the market and generally because it's a long term 25 year fixed term ppa with zero escalation i mean unheard of in thermal or other sectors so on a broad level we are seeing a, a tariff steady and which are going to remain fixed for the next 25 years so it's like a no brainer that's the next point is to build the infrastructure there is no second thoughts now that we have the market ready the immediate uh, thought will be to develop the back end chain yes yeah we can take next question when it middle this question is for you that what is the future of battery storage system in india uh definitely i mean i think arvind and pius had touched upon that topic uh the only concern with renewables is the intermittency uh we don't get 24 by 7 uh, continuous base load power if we look at all the current tenders in the government generally they are all coupled with some sort of storage whether it is pump storage battery storage there are uh, talks about uh, some vanadium red oxide batteries so uh, basically the technology in storage and you know uh, there is a lot of innovation a uh, cost has gone down drastically similarly the pattern of solar uh large corporates in the solar market have completely branched out into uh, storage whether we talk about chinese companies like trina and canadian or indian uh, manufacturers and the large developers who have started adopting adopting those in large scale uh i think i don't know the exact number but somewhere between 3.5 to 5 to 4 4 and 1/2 rupees for the solar with storage is what the uh, grid and the tariffs uh, discovered in the tenders so which is still lower or at least at the same level of the uh, uh, thermal uh, energy so i think uh, energy storage will uh, grow quite rapidly one on the utility scale but purely as a uh, end user consumer uh people will uh, embrace uh, energy storage for their own requirements for charging electric scooters or fire vehicles so the market is going to grow rapidly no doubt okay so in the exhibition have you see have you have you saw any new technology either in the cell or the modern module manufacturing that can bring more efficiency if can brought to india Yeah, so I guess one day I spent completely with Vinit like a shadow, 
meeting all his equipment providers and i couldn't he- get my head around that uh, every couple of years how the technology is changing so fast i mean there are equipment that are now being you know shipped to our country and the technology is changed in china so so that's the speed of uh, change in technology so one has to uh, understand there's the biggest risk when one is investing in this sector is that technology is changing fast and you need to keep tab of it and understand how it affects the, the company that you have and whether they are planned that technology shift properly or not so one has to look at one uh, has planned a two years kind of payback period for his equipment or not because if there is any further payback period that one has penciled into their uh, projections it can affect them because technology can change and they will not be able to even get get back the capital they've spent on the technology so yeah it is a good question and i feel that is the monetarable that one should work hard on once they uh, decide to invest in this uh, sector and which is and the other thing which is good for our country is that if you look at the major technologies around the world our country though has been behind in r&d but we have adopted technology whenever there has been stability so if you look at the theoretical efficiency of the cell that has now increased dramatically over the past 10 12 years though the technology is still changing but it is approaching theoretical levels where it would be then incrementally very difficult to increase the capacity so we are now at the fag end of maybe uh, mm. uh, the technologies will become stable and hence uh, the equipment need not be scrapped if the efficiency is just uh, 0.5% or 0.25% higher so pretty soon we will keep on hitting those levels and you cannot not invest in the sector by you know uh, that that i'll be the smartest one to invest last when the technology stabilizes so you have to run that risk i feel i'll just take one minute here uh, the technology change is uh, happening fast no doubt in that uh, people in china the large manufacturers are also facing the grunt of this equipment suppliers have realized that they cannot have a a uh, unipolar approach i mean whenever we talk to prospective uh, equipment suppliers they only talk about modularity they talk about uh, upgradation possibility in the same project or maybe with uh, smaller marginal uh, changes in tools in future say after the year after two years so they will come out with a road map that if certain top corner is right now prevalent in the market tomorrow if there is an ajt the equipment is ready to adopt ajt a year later maybe there are couple of new technologies called zero buzz bar and uh, uh, back contact so uh, there will be certain changes but it is not going to be a 100% uh, scrapping of equipment it is going to be a, a kind of a gradual incremental change on the module manufacturing also on the cell manufacturing which is going to be a large business in coming years uh the clear, clear thought is thorn thought on modularity so uh, we believe that the equipment uh, life will be at least 5 to 7 years clearly with minimum upgradations i think uh, having spoken to so many industry experts and, and companies here it is very clear that you know, india currently stands at monopark which still has say 12 months of uh, uh, leeway and while 75% of china's capacity is top corn as we move towards top corn we'll have another 10 to 12 quarters or maybe longer as has been mentioned you know the technology advances will slow down so over the next 3 to 4 4, 4 years or maybe 5 years we'll see a fairly stable technology transition so maybe we can take a couple of last questions because you know the the expo has closed and the uh, the security people are after our lives so, you know end this so maybe we can close it with a last question so one last question is that uh, what is the margin difference between the company that makes module versus that company that makes cell and module <laughs> uh, i think module this was uh, touched upon by arvind i would guess that module manufacturing would fetch between 10 to 12 percent bitters but uh, combined margins would cross to i think 30 to 35 percent 
I mean, this which is the current uh, scenario, I guess. Scenario. It should stabilize around 20-22% would also be wonderful. Um, and once capacity increases. Yeah. yeah. So but, we'll just like yeah. to close the uh, you know conversation with three takeaways that each of us has. Maybe from the conference, if we can start from Vinny. Uh, I think uh, the modularity approach is the biggest takeaway here where all the uh, new technologies are being adopted, but not keeping room for improvement in the future. Uh, the craze or the uh, followership, the fellowship for solar is increasing day by day. Uh, this is a clear indication. There is no uh, dearth of talent now in the sector, at least in the global sector and the R&D space. Mm. And third is the influx of energy storage in a very big way. I think these are the main take takeaways for me. My biggest takeaway is at observing so many entrepreneurs coming here wanting to put up cell plant is for the first time I have uh, this feeling that our ecosystem is now becoming broader and much more larger. Uh, our entrepreneurs, given with the policy continuity of the government, want to do larger capexes. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, wonderful to see. Second big takeaway is that these uh, entrepreneurs are in for a good cycle where maybe their equipment cost would not go up so much as the Chinese industry is slowing down. Hence, there will be manufacturer equipment which would want to target these Indian players who have this uh, you know, demand for growing their capacity. Hence, that will mean more support in terms of after sales, more support in terms of putting up the lines and cost. And the last is that uh, the prices that we are seeing of, you know, uh, the, the price, uh, the end uh, solar um, module prices in India look more stable with the kind of developments that are there in our country. I think I'll just end with one quick uh, takeaway. Uh, whatever pain China is in, I think the biggest gainer is India. And that will remain for the next five years, five years. So, you know, think about a decadal theme. There are very rare times in your lives you'll come across trends and themes where there's government support, where there's access to capital for the promoters, and there's uh, enough on the table for investors as well. So happy investing. Happy investing. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in.